Welcome to Mental Health First Aid. We have a show about animal assisted therapy and we have Mike Fredrickson here from Linden Oaks to talk about a little bit. Mike, you're, the, you're in charge of the program, aren't you at Linden Oaks? Uh, yeah, Barry, thanks for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here on Mental Health First Aid TV and to talk about animal assisted therapy. And yes, I'm the coordinator of the program at Linden Oaks Hospital. And we've had our program incorporated at the hospital for going on 10 years now. Wow. And it, it originally started at Edward Hospital back in 2002. And then in 2003, we brought the program over to Linden Oaks Hospital because we saw the benefit in the program and how it would tie into working with patients in the mental health setting. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working at Linden Oaks Hospital for nine years. I, uh, my, my primary position there is I, I'm an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. And uh, when now, I what, started- What does that consist of? Occupational therapy, what we do, in effect, occupational therapists started in mental health years and years ago. And what the word occupation really relates to what you do and how you spend your time and, and the purposeful functional activity in your life. So what OTs and OT is for short, help people to try to improve their functioning in their daily life. And they work in all different settings, uh, you know, hospitals, physical disabilities, but in, in mental health as well. Because what we try to do is look how these things interfere with people's ability to function mm -hmm. and help them to either learn new skills, adapt skills, or overcome difficulties in their life. Right. So right. actually a lot of these therapies tie right into what occupational therapists do as well. So we have one of our therapy animals here right now. Yeah, this is Rocky, and he's, he's actually my dog. He's a boxer. And he's, actually it was his birthday yesterday, he's nine years old. He's got a little gray around the yeah, suit there. Yeah, he's so. getting a little bit gray. Yeah. Um, he, uh, when I got him, I didn't get him as a, th I, the idea of him being a therapy dog. Uh, when I started at Linden Oaks years ago, I got him as a puppy. Mm -hmm. And when I started there, I didn't even realize they had the program. And But from day one, I was incorporating dogs into my therapeutic groups. Right. And then I decided one day, well, I'm going to see if he can make it in the program, which we'll talk a little bit about later, right. how that how that goes about. Um, but he's been a therapy dog for four years now, and um, he does really well. In fact, he worked a eight-hour day yesterday at the so hospital. So he's a little tuckered out now? Yeah, which is okay, because he, you know, he, he enjoys having his days off too and lounging right. a little bit. Right, right. I know when you go into Linden Oaks, there's a big supply of pictures yeah. of all the different animals we have. How many do we have at Linden Oaks? Well, at Linden Oaks, we have, I hover around 14 dogs, and 99% of them come in with a volunteer from the community who owns the dog. Mm -hmm. And then as well, we have a few staff members like myself who got our dogs certified mm -hmm. to be therapy dogs. So um, depending on what that staff member does, some of them are what we call mascot dogs where they come in and they kind of go on to the units and they'll visit a little bit. Or if it's a therapist like myself who works day to day with the patients on the inpatient units, my dog actually comes in and he works in the therapeutic groups with me. Right. And then the volunteers that I have come in from the community, I schedule them and they come in and work with therapists and the patients on are the they, units. Are there only dogs? Can there be cats or can they? We, no, it, it's kind of interesting because it says animal assisted therapy, so that's a little confusing, but we have dogs. And then the only other thing we do is we have our um, eating disorder program um, has a group home called Arabella House, mm -hmm. and they actually go and they do what's called equine therapy, which is with horses. Mm -hmm. And they go to a, uh, we have a group home out there, and they go to a stable called Reigns of Change, where mm -hmm. they actually bring the patients out there and work with the horses. You hear that quite a bit, not, mm -hmm. ju not just for eating, but for like uh, veterans and stuff. Oh, yeah, too. yeah. Uh, uh, equine therapy started years and years ago, um, also using with people with um, physical disabilities, like cerebral palsy, things like that, just to get on the horse and use your muscles. And right different right. way and uh, in fact as OTs did worked with that a lot um, so you know we do we do have the difference in the two animals we don't have cats or anything like that there's some issues with training ability mm -hmm. and allergies and things like that oh yeah so we don't, that. a lot of people ask about cats and we don't want to you know discriminate against the cat <laughs> lovers and yeah. things like that but right. the, I, dogs mostly you can predict they're they're a lot more trainable mm -hmm. and most dogs are more personable. I've, I've seen some cats that are very personable, but the dogs are really, they really shine on mm -hmm. the people and, and warm up to them. Now, really I gotta easy. ask you, in the pictures that we have at Linden Oaks, there's a picture of it looks like of a, a small horse. 
Yeah, and that's what that is. Is and, and that, I don't know what you call them, but a, a dwarf horse or something. No, or actually, I think it's just the the perspectives off on the picture. But oh, okay. what that is, that's a representation of the reins of change where they go out to oh, the group okay. home. I always have to tell um, patients and families, you know, don't worry, a horse doesn't come into the <laughs> lobby because they're yeah. they're envisioning this big horse right. walking through the lobby. Right. I said right. that would be a little bit tricky. Now you've heard other things like pigs and stuff, you know, where people uh, have pets for. Yeah, um, I think the. The things I've seen most are, there are cats, I've seen cats um, into programs. I've also seen birds as well mm. used as uh, therapy um, animals. Um, I've seen pigs as pets. Generally though, when you're bringing an animal into a program, you have, there's a lot you have to take into account being in a hospital right. or a therapeutic setting and working around other people. And we have a lot of guidelines that we have to follow right, with right. the animals as well. I too. would imagine with that. With uh, what, what is it like when you, you bring Rocky in? I mean, does he take the show? Does yeah, he does. And you know, if, you, if you're a person who brings a dog in, you gotta, you gotta be pretty confident in yourself because nobody pays attention to you after a while. When I bring the dog, <laughs> everybody good says hi to him and then they go, oh, hi, Mike. <laughs> or, or they forget completely to say hi to me. And um, I've had, you know, when it comes to mental health, uh, we have some patients who have more chronic illnesses. So mm -hmm. they, from time to time, end up back in the hospital. And it's amazing, you know, we'll make a difference in their life, but you know, when they come in and they see me, they're like, is your dog coming? Right. When's the dog gonna come? Right. When's Rocky gonna be here? And they're, they're yeah. asking right away, or, or just when is any dog gonna come in? When do, uh, I mean, is it like once a week you'll bring them in? Or? Um, well, that's the challenge. See, because we have mostly volunteers, yeah. what I have to do is, um, I, I have to work with the volunteers and I schedule them. What I try to do is, <clears throat> I try to get every unit in the hospital twice a month with a visit and then because we have some staff members who can bring our dogs in any time we can bring them in you know when we need to so if I know some patients are requesting then I can get my dog in right um, when I don't have that luxury of getting a volunteer in with their yeah. dog as well I know at the police department we had uh, uh, canine uh, dogs do uh, drug sniffing and, and mm -hmm. uh, all different types bomb sniffing type things and the dogs when they work them, that is a lot of work for them. Yeah. It is just, is it the same for him? I mean, it is. It just yeah, and we wipes actually, him out. We actually did a study at Edward Hospital, one of our nurses who looked at the stress on the dogs mm -hmm. as well, and there's a certain amount of stress. And we, we're actually cognizant of that. When the volunteers come in, they come in for like a two hour shift and mm -hmm. then they go home. And when we bring in the dog, we actually, you have to have an office where your dog can go to and, and just kind of chill out yeah. and get away from yeah. everyone for a while. I know we've had that before. And one of the ones we were at Edward Hospital during the nursing seminar and uh, somebody brought a dog in and they had a, a, a stroller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. It was a little dog and yeah. stuff, but it looked like probably so it could rest too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because there's a lot of walking involved in, in getting around the hospital and the smaller dogs or an older dog too, you know, you have to be kind of creative with that. And there's a difference between Edward Hospital visits and Linden Oak visits as be well. Because Edward is more, uh, it's a general hospital, so it's more yeah. of a, a uh, compassion type thing or just a talk? Yeah, I, I th you It's know, not really a working where they're trying to get them. Yeah, there's a, there's a big difference in, in how I uh, structure things at Linden Oaks versus what we do at Edward Hospital. But I think no matter what, whether it's at Edward Hospital or Linden Oaks, there's a mental health tie-in oh, yeah. to this yeah, that a I lot agree. of people don't yeah. realize. What I want to find out uh, next segment here is to see what kind of training you have to go through, mm -hmm. but what kind of training did Rocky have to yeah. go through too? We're going to find that out when we come back. Thanks. It begins innocently enough. You don't return a phone call. You break a date at the last minute. But in fact, it's the beginning of a pattern. And soon, your friend with mental illness realizes you're avoiding them. But what if you knew that your friendship was the key to their recovery? Would you still lock them out of your life? Real men know that getting tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to AHRQ.com. Everyone has friends. There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. 
And then there are the friends who will be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Welcome back to Mental Health First Aid. We have a segment on assisted animal therapy, and we were just wondering, we were talking about before, what kind of training do you have to go through, and, or does Rocky have to go through, and do you have to go together, and you know, is it, what, how do yeah. they do that? Well, yeah, they're, definitely you want to ha make sure you have a lot of training and protocols set up when you're bringing. I mean, is it a state certified program? It's or not, it, it, and that's interesting, it's not really a state certified program, even with uh, service dogs, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. There's no one main governing body that regulates all Interesting. of this. Yeah, I, I had to really look into this as, as working in the hospital and coordinating. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see different programs. Now, at Edward Hospital in Linden Oaks, we have our own program that we set up, and that really works well because then we have a lot of control over what happens with the, the people who come in and the animals. So there is... So you have policies and procedures yeah, that you created? Yeah, we have policies and, and procedures. Procedures right. that we created um, that are typed set in stone and we have mm -hmm. to follow those because there's a there's a big issue when you bring in animals to a hospital you got public health all right. of those things you have to worry about and 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 really you want to have the best interests of the patients who mm -hmm. are there in 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 mind when we're doing that right. so going going to the training what we did was we we decided to set up um, we found some uh, companies out there who are therapy dog companies, and there's mm -hmm. several out there. And what they do is they provide insurance to the volunteers who uh -huh. come in. But what they have to do to be able to get that insurance is pass a screening and a training program. So what we did was we found some trainers who were certified by these companies. And the companies are usually not necessarily in the state, but then they have trainers that they certify, so the trainers are right, in state. Right. So what we did was we set up our own trainers, and then twice a year at Edward Hospital, what we do is we do something called a temperament test. And like I said, 99% of our animals that come in come in with volunteer from the community. So what we'll do is on our website, edward.org, the mm -hmm. hospital, we'll put out, and there's a link that says animal assisted therapy. Right. We'll put out a, no a note saying we're looking for new candidates for our program. So what they do is they, they have to pass what's called a temperament test. And that's a one day event. And they have some criteria. The dog has to be at least a year old. And then the owner has to be at least 18 years old. And you come in as a team. The only dogs that they won't test out are pit bulls because they've had some issues in the past with um, just the liabilities along with pit bulls. And is that something that. inbred or genetic or I, is it? You know, most of the time what happens, just those dogs have, you know, because of kind of what they've, they're built for, they can be a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, they're a stronger dog. Right. And I think most of the issues when it comes to any dog is the people behind it and the, and how they interacted with the dogs. Right. But because it's a hospital setting, you know, we don't, they didn't want to have to deal to with the careful. liabilities and right. things like that. Um, they'll try out just about any dog. So during the temperament test, they come in, we, uh, we have trainers that are looking for specific things. They're looking for the dog's obedience. They have, to, they have to actually have done a group training course on their own before they even try them out. And the trainers are so tricky, they're actually watching when the people come in out in the parking lot to see if the dog is dragging them through right, the right. parking lot. And they get them in, they look for their obedience, their mm -hmm. basic obedience. And we get a bunch of dogs together in the room because there's times in the hospital, the dogs aren't together in the meetings with the patients, That's but they're in the hospital One of the together. questions I had, so you don't really work in teams or something? No, the it's teams individual. are the, the dog and the owner. Right. Uh, because no matter how good they are, when you get two dogs or three dogs in a room, they're gonna wanna pay more attention to each other than right. the patients. But the, the issue is though, when we meet, and especially at Edward, they they all meet in a in a office, and then they go down in an elevator, and they might have six dogs in an elevator at yes. one time. So they want to make sure they have a temperament right. where they're going to get along. When the dogs are near each other, they're not allowed to play with each other, right. sniff each other, all of that. Right. So they look for the temperament, they look for the obedience, they actually put toys on the floor mm -hmm. and see if the dogs are going to go after those uh -huh. and try to play with those. Do you put like a hamburger down or something? They actually do, with it. <laughs> believe it or not, what they do is they go through all that obedience, you do it in a group, you zigzag through all the other dogs, then they um, have you do your obedience on your own because there's stress involved with right. that. Then they do, they look for food. So what they do is, and Rocky loves food, so they had them sit. I have to make them sit. 
step away from them, and then they put a plate of food. In this case, they put a plate of cheese on the floor in front of them. Then oh, you have to man. tell them, leave it. You have to step away from the dog, and the dog has to sit there and leave that stuff alone and not go after it. So is that something you work with them on your I own? worked with it because I knew what we had to do. You, could, you can ask them ahead of time. Because cheese is like a dog's really Oh, it like is, cheese, yeah. And, and, you know, he's, like, looking at it, like, and he's looking at me, like, can I, can <laughs> I go for it? Start sweating and drooling. And then he's passing the lady. The trainer kicks it a little closer to see what he's going to do. Oh, and then, you know, and then they want to see, you know, how do, we, how do they react when you touch them? So, mm -hmm. you know, like, if I grab them, you know, some dogs, are, he's just looking at me like, what's he doing? They actually pinch them a little bit. Mm -hmm. They'll touch their ears, things like that. Yeah, because okay. we get patients, like at our hospital, our elderly folks who have dementia. So he's just going to roll back. Um, who have dementia. And Somebody they wants his belly them. rubbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might touch them or grab a hold of them and things like that. And they don't want dogs that are going to, like, try to bite right. or mouth them. Right. Um, if they pass all of that. Then they do three days of training in the hospital where they actually set up oh, wow. beds and IVs and wheelchairs right. and all of those things. They actually train them to get up in beds with patients, mm -hmm. things like that. And then dogs like to sniff stuff too. Right. So they'll actually set up like fake IV lines and smear peanut butter on the lines to see if the dogs are licking it because right. we don't want the dogs licking those right. things. Right. And then you went back to how else are we, who else are we training? We're training the owners. Because the dogs aren't robots, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to mm -hmm. go for this stuff and they're going to try to jump How on well people. they listen to the owner. Yeah, the owner, we want to see is the owner calm and then also is the owner watching what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know they're going to go for it, so do you correct them? Mm -hmm. and, and can they be corrected and then right. how, how, do they, how do they respond to that correction? And we've actually had dogs that were probably would pass, but the, occasionally an owner didn't because they weren't doing a good job right. watching the animal. Right. Um, that's the biggest thing and usually behind most behaviors that don't aren't mm -hmm. good with the, it's with the, the dog it's, it's the owner yeah. you see that time and time again right so. right how many do we, we how many do you keep on an average well we have um the whole program between edward and Winnie oaks we hover around a hundred dogs wow. in our program so at edward hospital every day they have is about that part six, of the policy where you have you can't go over 100 or? no they what we do is we try to figure out a working um number of people to utilize. If right. you get too many, then the volunteers, because they, they have to actually, the dogs have to have all their immunizations, mm -hmm. they have to keep up with a lot of regulations, they have to have a bath before they come in the hospital, right. be groomed, so it's a lot of work. So we want to make sure they have they enough do to go around, yeah. and uh, we don't want them to come and leave within, they, at Edward they do two hour shift, mm -hmm. at Linden Oaks the volunteers do a two hour shift. If you get too many, and especially at Linden Oaks, because we're using the dogs big. in a group, yeah. it, you get too many dogs. If I had dogs there every day, it would kind of lose its luster. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, because you always have, and you always have people who don't want the dogs around too, and we mm -hmm. don't push that with them. And then the other thing we have to deal with are allergies. Do you try to stay away from long-haired or do you? No, um, we have all different dogs. We have the smallest dog we have is a Yorkshire Terrier, and the biggest we have is a Mastiff that weighs about 200 pounds. Wow! Uh, but Put what a saddle we, on him, take him yeah. for a ride. What we do though is during nursing assessments, they ask the patients, "Do you want to visit from the dog?" And then they ask, "Are there any issues like allergies, right. Right. Um, or fear, or anything like that?" And then we address that. One of the things I want to find out is, is what exactly with therapy? What do you do exactly? Mm -hmm. We'll do, talk about the next section, and then also where, where uh, other types of animals, you know, where do they fit into this and, okay. and what we do with that. Yep. We're going to be right back and, and uh, talk more about these things, but thanks for being with Mental Health First Aid. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Whatever we deny or embrace for us or for better, we belong, we belong, we belong, we belong together. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Ready. Ready. 
It can be a little awkward when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. But what's even more awkward is, if you're not there for him, he's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, what looks good? Our special today is shrimp scampi. It's been sitting around for about a week. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of serious complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. Welcome back to Mental Health First Aid. Dog-assisted or animal-assisted therapy is what we're talking about, and dogs mostly, it sounds like what we're going mm -hmm. with. And it was just, we were wondering, what does it exactly entail like a day at work with Rocky? What happens? What do you do? Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a couple of different ways. And when we look at animal-assisted therapy, what we're talking about is <clears throat> there's two different things. There could be an animal-assisted activity where uh, you bring in a dog and they just kind of interact with a person and it's not really structured or goal-driven. And then we have animal-assisted therapy, which is more of a structured, goal-driven activity. And there's several different ways that we do that. And, and I know we were talking about earlier there's different ways therapy comes about. And mm -hmm. at Linden Oaks Hospital, we have a number of different types of therapists. We have, we have psychologists, psychiatrists, we have clinical social workers, mm -hmm. but we also have art therapists, music therapists, recreation therapists. And there's many different ways you can tie in therapy and teach people and people learn in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so what we try to do at Linden Oaks is provide many different methods of bringing this therapy to the patients. So on a typical day, um, if we go to Edward Hospital, and uh, real briefly, if you look at like, if you had like physical therapy or occupational therapy, right. <clears throat> they might bring in a dog into a, a clinic where they gotta get the patients moving. And instead of just having them like reach for a ball or things like that, they, let's say they were gonna work on their arm, mm -hmm. they might have them actually like groom the dog and get the uh. arm moving for the dog and trying to reach for things for the right. dog. Um, when, we, when we go to the Edward Hospital, and the patients are just in their room, even though it's just a visit, they bring the dogs into the room and they visit with the patients, you know, for a couple of minutes. And they actually did a couple of studies where it showed that it lowered their blood pressure rates. And it also, um, when patients had surgery and they were post-surgery in their rooms, they did an actual study where um, the dogs being in the room got their mind off of their pain. And when they had the button to push for right. pain medication, right. it reduced that need for pain medication about 30% wow. while the dog was in the room. And you know, if we think about even at Edward Hospital, when you're in the hospital and you're not feeling well physically, mm -hmm. it can be a mental health right. issue. You and know, to break you it on that knee, break it up something, you know, just yeah, something things different. like that. So that brings uh, and also, like I said, it gets their mind off of things, too. You were even saying with coworkers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even coworkers. When you're at, at the Edward Hospital, the nurses are all coming to greet the dogs right. and things like that. So they love seeing them as well. Now, at Linden Oaks, it's a little bit different. Um, what we do is we try to incorporate the dog. Sometimes it's a visit mm -hmm. because even if you think about it, there's times when the patients, they're, they're there all day and we run a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. So the therapy comes in groups at Linden right. Oaks Hospital. There are one-to-one -one therapies and mm -hmm. times, but a lot of things, t skills are taught in groups. And after a while, they're in groups all day. They're kind of tired right. of all of this stuff. So a dog coming and just visiting with them mm -hmm. can still be therapeutic. Um, and actually during the evening, sometimes in visiting hours, we have patients who don't get visitors all the time. Right, right. And visiting hours can be a little bit stressful mm -hmm. in a mental health setting too. So the, I, I schedule some dogs to come and the volunteers to come during visiting so they can interact right. and it kind of brings the stress level well, down. Well, they've been saying that to, to get your own animal, your own dog oh, or yeah. cat or something, it helps you to yep. live a better life mm -hmm. and stuff. To yeah. Now for the therapeutic group, so we try to use the dog as a tool in the group. So we can use the dog to teach things like stress management management, right. anxiety management, um, even an addiction program and eating disorders. Right. We can kind of look at, even if you think about in an eating disorders program, we have patients who have 
um, body image issues and things mm -hmm. like that and mm -hmm. self-esteem. And if you look at the dog, Rocky comes in the room and he's non-judgmental. And we talk mm -hmm. about the stigma, mm -hmm. you know, with mental Except health first you aid. Are. Yeah. He comes in the room and he goes around. He doesn't care what people are wearing. He doesn't care how much money they make. He doesn't even know he's in a psych hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, he goes around the room and we talk about that to the patients. What does he well, care that's a about? a good point. Yeah. How do we interact? And, and, you know, he's somebody you can talk to. Now, he's not going to cure things, right. but he's a good stress reliever. If you can get rid of the stress and get them to feel mm -hmm. better about themselves and stuff, you are helping. Oh yeah, helping definitely. Yeah. And, and before you know it, and I've had patients who were so depressed they didn't want to get out of bed and we couldn't get them out of bed right. to go to group, but if they knew the dog was coming, mm -hmm. I would get them in the room and they actually got them out of bed and to come to group. And sometimes that's what it takes in the acute care in that inpatient setting is some of those first steps. Right. Right. Because, you know, it, people are struggling at that point. That's where they're at that crisis stage. Right. And then right. we also send the dogs to outpatient, too. And mm -hmm. We have our Mill Street location. Right. And because the patients have it inpatient, they still love to have it in outpatient. We'll take it to a higher level there. Mm -hmm. And we actually use them in anxiety management. Mm -hmm. I even bring in the dog, and we can see how fast the dog calms, how, how, how quickly he can get anxious, right. and how the patient's interactions can cause him to be calmer. Well, it's even in the curriculum anxious. for mental health first day, they say take a break from the, mm -hmm. from the stress or the time going yeah. on when you're talking to somebody who's having some problems with anxiety or depression. Depression. Take a break from that. Talk about the you know the Cubs or, or something else. Just something to get away from it. Yeah. Be perfect for yeah. a dog to come mm -hmm. by and just to be able to relax a little bit and not get into the major uh, dilemmas that you're you know involved in yes. and trying to work. Yeah. On. And the staff, like you said before, the staff loves it too. Like it, it, anytime working in a hospital setting is stressful for everybody. So they'll come and spend time with the dog. They'll see the dog too. And you know what? That makes us better clinicians as well because if we learn how to de-stress. Plus, it's also a good example for the people we're trying to help to see. They see mm -hmm. we're human beings right. and we go through right. stress. And, you know, the NAMI talks about, you know, one in four mm -hmm. people have to deal with some type of mental health right. situation right. or crisis. Mm -hmm. And we're all human beings. We're all going to go through mental health crisis. Right. The, actually, the dogs, and I've taught this for our patients, is the dogs can be a good barometer of how you're doing mm -hmm. because they're with you all the time. And you'll actually see patients talk about, they, they noticed their dog was getting really depressed. Right. And I'll, I'll say, well, describe that for me. They go, well, he's not getting up. He's not exercising. Right. He's not right. interacting. And I'll say, what did your life look like in the past six months? And they'll describe, I haven't been getting up. I haven't been mm -hmm. going to work. I haven't been interacting. I said, hmm, sounds like your dog. Right. Right. And I'll say, did, did the dog give example? it to you? Or, you know, and they'll yeah. say, I yeah. never really looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. But the dog also gives them a motivation or something to do. And we'll, we'll look at like Rocky, he gets a sense of purpose through work. Mm -hmm. And he never knew that before and we'll teach that. Even so far as to say he's getting older right. and we teach people how do you how do you go through those stages of life. Right. And when they look at the animal, they can relate to that. So in a group, we start out talking about the dog, but before the group is over, the dog's kind of laying there right. snoozing right. and everybody's looking at how this ties into their own mental we health. We talked about that at one of the breaks. That Rocky's got an ID card there. Yeah. And that's for a specific reason because he works for Linden Oaks or for yes. Edward Hospital. Yeah, yeah. And we, we want to make sure that people know that the dogs come in and are the dogs that are supposed to be in there right. and gone through the Because if somebody sees a dog walking in, they think you can bring your dog in. Yeah, Yeah, yeah they don't exactly. see, you know, well, that's a registered dog. Yeah, and them. we want the 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 the... the the folks that we interact with to know that the animals we're bringing in are highly trained and mm -hmm. go through this whole process you so know, they're not so worried about we've it. We've had the Illinois Crime Prevention Association, uh, I'm the vice president of that, and uh, we have had different conferences and different things come on where we do some uh, educational mm -hmm. programs. And I know some of your dogs have been there before. So yeah. will you do that? Can they use yeah, that? Yeah, we, we do. Edward House, we go into the community as well. We do some bite prevention programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. And uh, we, we go to some, we'll, we'll actually go out to um, some of the assisted care facilities and talk about um, animal assisted therapy and I appreciate you bringing all this too. information to us. It's been great. Thanks a lot. And Rocky, thanks for being here, buddy. <laughs> And Here's thank you today. for being here. We appreciate you joining us at Mental Health First Aid, and we'll see you next time around. Thanks. Thank you.